Okay, this uh, bright spot here, that's actually the nucleus of the galaxy. The spiral arms, you can just barely see them. Uh, maybe you guys in the back can't make them out, but uh, if you look at this on the Internet, uh, this is a, uh, a published photo on the Internet of the Andromeda galaxy. Those spiral arms are actually about as wide as the full moon. But because your eye is not a regular camera for which uh, time exposures can be made, in other words, you can't expose your retina like a piece of film for a minute and get all the dim detail of this galaxy. Um, because of that, you can't really see those spiral arms as big as they actually are. But it's about as big as a full moon. It's kind of cool. And this mountain range here in the picture uh, is the uh, Italian Alps, the northern part of Italy. And just as a, a side note for stargazing, uh, you can actually see the nucleus, and I have actually seen it. Hi. You're in, you're in my class now this semester, too. Great. Good. Lindsay's up here. She was in physical science last semester. Great. Uh, good. Sorry for broke my concentration there. Um, yeah, you can, you can actually see this. So if you're a stargazer, if you like looking at the stars, this is a challenging thing, but you can spot it. Maybe not in Florida in the summer, but uh, the time I did it, I... This is not so good. The time I did it, it I was up in northern Maine uh, on a clear summer night. And so uh, go ahead and write down this web address. I'll just I'll recite it out loud. This is getting me really mad. Um, uh, the website is uh, Astronomy Picture of the Day, A P O D, A P O D, dot NASA dot gov. I don't know what's going on with this. A P O D dot NASA dot G O V apod.nasa.gov uh, I guess I have to go through this thing of switching over again this is not very good I'll do it today but I can't touch anything. It, 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 as soon as I touch something, it. It's not HDMI. It's it, it's a VGA. It sucks. Where am I supposed to screw it in tighter? There's I can't get to it. It's all it's all behind locked doors down here. Anyway, we'll tr try to go to the next slide. We got a lot of stuff to do off the off the display, so it's not a big disaster if we have to shut down. But um, yeah, so here's the spelling of my name. I have a PhD in theoretical astrophysics, and so um, that means for me, anyways, black holes and the big ah. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, the Big Bang Theory and stuff like that. Yeah. My slides, are they online? Why would they be online? I'm, I'm planning on equipment that works. I'll be putting, I'll, be, I'll normally be recording this and putting it on YouTube, so it's not a disaster, you know, except for today. But why would I have it online? I, you know, I'm, I'm used to equipment that works. This is ridiculous. But I'll just give you a verbal lecture and you can take notes. Okay, so I know all about the Big Bang Theory and black holes. Hopefully I'll get a chance to lecture about it. 
uh, toward the end of the semester about the Big Bang Theory and black holes and the cool stuff about them. Um, and by Big Bang Theory, I am not referring to the television show, which I cannot stand. Uh, and anybody else feel that way? That they, you know, I, I mean, I know it's popular, but I, for one, cannot stand it. Uh, anyway. I've been here at UCF since 2002, and raise your hand if you're a freshman. You admit to being a freshman. Okay, good. Raise your hand if you're if you're a freshman, and this is your first semester at UCF. A few of you. Okay, there's a, so first uh, first aid, not first aid, but uh, FAQ. There's a difference between PID and NID. So. Uh, so that's just a little helpful tip to, to you guys. <laughs> this is, uh, I tell you, this is always something. Anyways, we're going to have a TA for the semester, Brandon Little. He's not here today. Uh, but he's going to be in lecture, and he's going to help us in web courses too. We have homework uh, in web courses tonight, homework one. It's not very big. Uh, and uh, it's just three questions. Um, and uh, now, the thing I, w I want you to—you probably don't have to make a note of this, although we will be taking notes in a few minutes on the equipment that you see up here in front. Uh, one remark I would like to share with you, and that is, this course is great. I really love this course, and I love to teach it because um, anybody can be an amateur astronomer if you take this class. And then for the rest of your life, you take up the hobby of amateur astronomy. You can have a blast and, you know, learn a lot and uh, and enjoy yourself. So now you can't say that about like physical science class. You know, nobody's an amateur physicist. But amateur astronomy, yeah, everybody in here could be one. So I, I welcome you to that. Now, I want to do, and there's item three. I guess this thing is just going to fade in and out. We'll just keep going here. I want to do some observations and experiments up here, so if it fades out, we don't have to worry about it. Um, and I'll just kind of ease over here. Um, what we've got here, and you can take notes on this. This is um, observation number one. And what we've got here is a string with a metal sphere. Uh, it's got kind of a little uh, eyelet in the top of it connected to the string, and then the string is connected to the top of this framework. Uh, the length of this pendulum, it's a pendulum, is about 1.00 meters. So go ahead and write down, length equals 1.00 meters. Now, I'm going to do a, um, it, it's going to look really basic, but I'm just going to ease it out here to the side and let it swing. Are your eyes getting sleepy? Are you coming into my hypnotic powers? <laughs> All right, anyways, uh, here's a question. I want you to think. That's what this class is about. We're going to think. How much time does it take to go from the left side over to the right side? How could you answer that question? What could you do to generate an answer? You know, like 17.5 seconds or something like that. How, what, what could you do? Raise your hand if you have an idea. What could you do? Like a stopwatch? Stopwatch. Anybody here got an iPhone? If you have an iPhone, you got a stopwatch. Okay, go ahead and get it out. Let's time this. Okay. All right. And what I want you to do, if you have an iPhone, get your stopwatch out. I'll give you a second. And you can all see it, and it's, and this, you guys, the technical term for this is it is oscillating, O S C I L L A T I N G, oscillating. It is oscillating. It is a pendulum, a vertical pendulum, and um, we can time it. So what I want to know is, uh, let me start it going sideways here. Okay, left. Right, left, right. 
I want you to time it. Go ahead and time like one. Either left to right or right to left. See what you see if you can do it. Okay. Now I want you to raise your hand if you've got a time. Who has a time? What do you have? One point oh eight. What do you have? Twenty five. What do you have? Did you get one? No. Okay. You got your fo so you're on Facebook. Oh, okay. Did you get one? I got a couple. I got one one point oh five. Anybody over here get one? What do you get? Well, I did a lap in this alternating between. Wait, 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 wait. You did a lab? Lap. Like oh, a lap? Like no, I want only want one. Who gave? Who who measured one? Red shirt. Wait a minute. What's your first name? Paula. Paula. Okay, Paula. What did you get? Point nine one. Okay. Uh, any, okay. Point nine five. Point nine five. Anybody? Else? Somebody was raising their hand back there. Okay. What do you got? One point oh. What are we talking about? Approximately. About a second. All right. Uh, how could we make a more? But the, you know, the, all the, the numbers that we we just talked about. Um, I hope you wrote down a few of them. Uh, how can we get a little bit m less scatter? A little bit more precision. What do you think? You average, it. average it? You mean average everybody's? All right, let's average everybody's. All right, let's go through it again. Now, you had one, right? Okay, everybody write this down. We'll start from, uh, we'll start from over here. We'll start from this segment over here. You guys on the right. Anybody here have a time? Raise your hand if you have a time. Okay. Point nine one. There's your first time. One point oh. There's your second time. Okay. Over here in this middle left or middle right. Raise your hand if you have a time. Okay. What do you have? Point point nine one. One point oh eight here. 105, 1.05. 185. 185. 0.85. Uh, blue sweater. 0.93. Uh, anybody in the back there? Uh, yeah, way back there. I can see you with the reddish hair. What do you got? 0 0.92. Okay, we're going to average all these up. Uh, do you guys have a calculator? If you don't, get... Get one of these for 15 bucks at Walmart or came apart or something. You can average stuff up. You have a time? I average. No, I don't want the average yet. You keep hush hush your uh, winkies about the uh, average. I want individual times. For, right now, we'll get your average in a second. Uh, times over here in this segment. Times, times, times. Okay. 1.06. 1.06 and. Your name is Chelsea? Paula. Paula, close. Okay. Point nine one. Point nine one. Uh, young lady with the specs? 1.06. Okay. And uh, young man with the black uh, UCF shirt? 0 0.95. And I think there were a couple over here. Uh, okay, all the way in the back. What do you got? 0 0.92. Okay, good. Uh, how many is that? Right. Okay, yeah. 11? All right, add them up, divide by 11. It's 13. Oh, okay. Add them up carefully. Count them, and then add them up, and then divide by how many there are, 13. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see if we verify. Did you, did you get, did you get all 13? No, uh, I Oh, the the turbo twins over here got them. Okay. Okay. It's all right. You, you do you guys agree? Oh, okay. And what are you doing? For the average? You just kind of quiet there. Already got the average. These guys are still working on this. That's good. Point nine. Point nine seven. Point nine six. Oh, okay. So you round it up. Okay. Uh, anybody else have an average? Give me raise your hand if you have the average. Figure it out. Uh, what do you got? 
0.96. What do you got? 0.9654. A baseball hat. 0.97. Point nine six five. Uh, anybody else have an average yet? It sounds like we're at about. What, what do you got? Okay, we're about point nine six five. Maybe rounded up to point nine seven. Okay, notice how that's tightening it up. What's another way that you could make a measurement of this behavior and get a fairly tight set of measurements? What do you think? Oh, you're talking about different equipment. Yeah, so so what's your first name? Matthew's up here in the front saying, get it so that it hit a button, hits a button when it comes across. Yeah, or like a laser beam or something like that. Cuts it. And, yeah, you can do that electronically. But with the, the gear that we have here, what could you do to maybe get a, di a good number? What do you think? Well, that's that's right. That's what you'd do if if you were Sir Isaac Newton. And so that's a good idea. And that's that is actually how you would do the theoretical version. You know, predict the value of it based on the length, and the strength of gravity, and so forth. And yeah, that's how you do it. A bunch of square roots, and there's two pi in there, and stuff like that. But in terms of measuring, counting, etc., what could you do? Instead of just measuring one left to right or one right to left, what could you do? Um, like maybe take like 30 seconds and then count how many times it goes back and forth. Okay, but how do you count a fraction of a well, back and forth? Well, like 30 seconds on the timer and then count like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, but what if 30 seconds comes oh. and you're right in the middle of the, then what do you, so uh, now uh, there's a possible variation on that. So that, that you could do if you had like a protractor and you could like take snapshots, okay? And then you know the fraction of the swing and you can figure it out. What do you think? And you do it the other way around and you count out 10 or so of the periods and then see how, many, how long that takes. Okay. You want to try that? That's a good idea. Is that what you were thinking of? Yeah, that would be interesting. We'll try that next. Let's count out 10 cycles. All right, here we go. I'm going to set this thing going. Okay, I'm going to start it right here. And I'm going to, now everybody get their stopwatch ready. All right, and we're going to count off, even you guys in the back. I can see you back there. I can just barely see your head poking up. Okay. All right, you guys in the back row. Um, I'll tell you when to start, and we'll count 10 um, swings, five left to right, five right to left, okay? And I'll tell you when to start, okay? And let me start it swinging. And when I say go, start your stopwatch. And when I say stop, stop your stopwatch, okay? Go. Stop. What do you got? Uh, what do you got? What do you got? 9.83. What do you got? 9. Point, see what we got? Now divide that by 10, and this, that's again close to 9, 0 0.97. Okay, and that's just with one measurement from one person, but counting 10 different. So. Who's got a, something close to 9.6 or 9.7? Raise your hand if you got 9.6, 9.7. Okay, good. Good. Now, distance across. All right. I'm going to bring it way out here. All right. Let's do another 10 sec. Uh, another 10. Uh, 10. Um, 
extra verses. Another five right to left and another five left to right. Okay, so I'm going to start way out here. So a little bit further out. Okay, okay so this is about mm, 20 centimeters out to the right. All right. So get your, get your computer on zero and when I say start, start your ready, start. Stop. What did you get? 5.8. What? Should it take more time? I mean, you're moving further, right? What did you get? 10.7. 10 point, well, you're a little high compared to your neighbor. Uh, young lady with the glasses, did you measure that one? 10 point, okay, that's a little bit closer. Okay, is that what you guys got? 10.01? All right. Uh, still, it, it still boils down to about one second per left to right or per right to left. And as uh, one of the students up here, in the, what's your name? Drew. Drew. As Drew up here in the front suggested, yeah, there is a theory that, you know, if we were in a physics class, we could figure out the exact formula involving the square root of the length and the square root of gravity and a factor of 2 pi and figure out the exact period. And at one meter length, the period is about two, uh, period, go ahead and write this down. The period of the motion is one left to right and one right to left. In other words, start, you know, at your starting point, Go all the way out and then all the way back. That one full trip, one round trip. Okay, that's the, the time for one round trip is the period. The symbol for the period is capital T. So you would write capital T equals 1.0 seconds approximately, or I think what we would say 0 0.97 seconds. I think is a, about where we're talking with all our measurements if we average everything. So but pretty close to one. So you would say T equals 0 0.97 seconds when the length is 1.00 meters, which is what the length of this pendulum. I asked them to set it for me at 1.00 meters. So that's what it is. Okay? It is an oscillating system. The force that, for, that makes it oscillate is gravity. You know, if you, if you, if you just have it down here, Hanging straight down, gravity's not going to help you at all. But if you move it out here a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left, gravity will try to bring it down to the bottom. But it overshoots, and then it comes back, and so it will oscillate. And eventually the friction up here at the very top and the air resistance will slow it down. But, you know, I'll, I'll start this thing going, and I'll just let it go now for the rest of class. And... The interesting thing is, it doesn't depend on how far out you make it go. All it depends on is the length. And students, the person that discovered this, you can write this down in your notes, Galileo. And when did he do it? When he was in college, when he was about your guys' age. Galileo, the famous astronomer, the famous physicist. Do you know what he started out? He started out as a mathematician. He's a professor of mathematics. Kind of cool. But he became known for astronomy and, uh, and physics. Now, I've got another demonstration. I'm just going to let that go. I want to show you, okay, uh, what is your name again? Hunter. Could you come up here and not help? Okay. I've got some tuning forks mounted on these wooden boxes. And you can see that one end of them is, let's just step around over here. Come around over here. One end of them is um, solid and the other end is open. Okay, so and what that does is, it, it, number one, it channels the sound. And two, it's kind of like an organ pipe. It makes a note, uh, a very pure note. And so this tuning fork here is, like all tuning forks, it's well-machined uh, piece of aluminum. And it is set to have a very specific note. 
Now let's listen to what the note is. All right. Now, anybody have perfect pitch? Do you know what that note is? What are you in the blue shirt in the back? In the back. C, G. Whoa, C and G, they're pretty far apart. Uh, anybody else with... Uh, you know there's an app that you can actually measure the note. You know, I guess, I guess it's for tuning a guitar. What you, see? Yeah. All right, let's try this other one. Can you hold this by the tuning fork, Hunter? Just hold it there. You'll see why in a minute. All right, let's check this. Now, this is supposed to be identical. Let's see how it sounds. Sounds pretty pretty close. What do you think? Still pretty close? Yeah. All right. They're supposed to be. They are. All right. Now, uh, if, keep your whole hand on there. Hunter is holding on to this tuning fork. So let me strike it. And you don't really get anything. But if you're not holding it, you get a nice note. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is start with Hunter holding this tuning fork, so there's no way, even if I if I strike it with this uh, mallet, uh, it won't make any sound. But I am going to strike this one. It is unperturbed. It is free to oscillate. Oh, did I say oscillate? Yes. Observation number two, oscillating tuning forks and sound waves. I'm going to strike this one unperturbed and then just set it right next to its partner over here and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so now, ready? Here we go. Let go of that. You hear that? It's from the other one. It was, it's from the one that Hunter... We, nobody hit it. But this, this first one... Okay, do it again. Okay, let's try it again. Now listen. I'm going to hit this one. This one won't make any sound because I'm not going to hit it and Hunter's holding on to it. But I am going to hit this one and let's see what happens. Let go. Now I'm going to shut this one down. Hear that? It's this one. See how it immediately shuts off when I put my hand on it? My wonderful students, that is known as resonance. R-E-S-O-N-A-N-C-E. -E. There's a famous, famous film called Tacoma River, Tacoma Narrows Bridge Disaster from like 1941 where this big suspension bridge out in Tacoma, Washington was caught by the wind at just the right speed that it went into resonance and started oscillating the entire bridge and oscillated so heavily that it disintegrated the bridge. It blew the bridge up. It's kind of cool. So look that up on the Internet, Tacoma Narrows Bridge, and you'll see Buku YouTubes about it. It's kind of cool. But that's resonance as well. And what we're doing is resonance here. Now, Hunter, I want you to come around over here. Uh, come over. Let's switch places. Okay, just to make sure it's not some phony baloney operation here, we're going to try it the other way. You hold that one and I'll strike this one. Let go. So the first one, here's how you would describe it. The first tuning fork excites the second tuning fork. The first one is struck. The second one starts with zero oscillation. Or as with uh, Green T-shirt man, what's your first name? Cody. Cody. As Cody was asking about the the width of the of the swing of the pendulum is called the amplitude, A M P L I T U D E. Okay. Zero amplitude for this one over here. Maximum amplitude at the start for this because we hit it. Plenty of sound from this. It excites a smaller amplitude. It's not as loud, but you can hear it. Can you guys in the back hear that second one? Yeah, you pick it up? Yeah. These things are really good. Okay, so that's resonance. Now, I'm going to show you a third 
observation. And this one is going to be with the tuning forks. And what I'm going to do is attach this little weight. It's just a little metal clip with a little screw in it so I can tighten it down. And when I do that on the tuning fork, it'll change the characteristics of the tuning fork. So here's the little piece of metal. I'll hold it sideways so you can see. Okay, here it is up at the top. All right. Now, what I'm going to do... Okay, Hunter, you ready to use the mallet? Okay, here you go. Strike that one. Okay, so there's the standard. Strike that one. What do you think? Same or different? Different. I, I think it's different. Okay. Okay, let's try it again. Go ahead with this one. All right. Which one is lower? Lower pitch. The one with the clip on it? Yeah. I agree. So make a note. Small perturbation. Lower pitch. Lower pitch means lower frequency. So if... Um, what's your name with the dark blue shirt? You were guessing C for these? Charles. Okay, Charles. Charles was saying that this is a C. Now, this one's no longer a C. Or it's about a B. B flat. B flat. Yeah. Two half steps. Everybody knows it. Except I never heard of that. It's two half steps according to this. All right, so it's definitely different. Okay? Now, I want you to listen carefully. I'm going to hit both of them. Okay, so this is observation number three. Okay? And, Charles, what I'm going to do is, this is like having two instruments, one's playing a B and one's playing a C. All right? And they're real close to each other. Now, you guys in the back might not hear it, but I want you to, sharp, to you know, clean out the earwax, and let's try to listen to what happens. You hear that? What is that? They can't harmonize. They're, they're not the right number of steps away to be in harmony. What does it sound like? With the hat. What do you, what do you think? Yeah. Not in harmony, it's dissonant. Okay, definitely. I wonder if I could adjust this this clip here so that it would be. Probably you could. Uh, what else would you do? Let's do it again. Let's listen to it. What words would you apply to that to describe it? Raise your hand if you want to, if you have it. What do you think? No, they're not. This one's waving at this. And they are different frequencies. But is there something else that's oscillating? Let's look. No, the clip's, the clip's pretty tight. Clip's, clip's not moving. Okay, so that's not. But let's listen again. Is there something else that's oscillating? You know, the boxes are something. I'll tell you what. Let's change the clip a little bit. Let's move it down about an inch. Okay. So, uh, third observation, tuning forks, observation number three. Second variation, clip moved down by an inch. Okay, now we're trying to figure out some words to describe this, because they're definitely not in harmony. They are dissonant. But let's see what, let's see if what, what we get with this variation. All right.
Now what do you think? What words would you use to describe that? See, this is so. This is um, this is you back in the 1700s, or famous scientists back in the 1700s, trying to figure out how to describe this. You know, they did it. You know, back in the 1700s, but it was just as hard putting words to it for them as it is for you guys. So you guys, you know, and you guys are doing good. So, so if we put you in a time machine back in the 1700s, you'd probably do it. That is a lovely statement. It, she said, now what's your first name? Zena. Zena. Zena's up here in the third row. And she said, it kind of sounds like there's a, how did she say it again? There's a third It sounds like there's a third tuning fork oscillating. Let's do it again and see if, if you agree. Really slow tuning fork. Raise your hand if you agree with Zena that there's like a third. They are clashing. They're interacting. I mean, if if I don't hit this one, this one will excite that one. So we know that the waves will interact with tuning forks. The waves will interact with themselves. And that is exactly the concept that we want to reinforce here. This is called beat. B-E-A-T-S, beats. If you've ever been nabbed by the police for a speeding ticket, of course, I know you were all nice, nice boys and girls and you never disobey the law or anything like that. And nobody in here has ever gotten a ticket except for me because I admit it, I did get one a couple years ago. It's the last day of finals week. I wasn't really, I just wanted to get home and I was going 37 in the 25 and man, they busted me. Anyway, but I know that you guys are nice uh, young men and women, and you don't do stuff like that and get speeding tickets. But if, if you ever heard of somebody that did, not you, but somebody else maybe, a friend, uh, this is how they do it. They, they don't do it with sound waves, though. They do it with uh, radar, you know, the radar gun. It comes back at a slightly different frequency, and then the, the electronics picks up that beat, you know, that third oscillator Xena. The third oscillation, that's the beat. That's, hold on a second. No caller ID. Ooh. No caller answer. Okay. Um, so the third, the third oscillation, the beat frequency, is what the electronics in the radar gun pick up uh, that the police are operating with, and then they measure that frequency and they figure out the, the speed that you're moving either away or towards, and ding, they give Dr. B a ticket or whoever's getting a ticket. So this is, this is cold beats, and uh, Charles, the general term for this is just like you were saying, interaction of waves, the two sources of waves, the waves from each interact. The fancy word for it is interference, wave interference, an interference effect, wave interference. So when we got the resonance, that was a wave interacting with a tuning fork. Now we've got two tuning forks equally started with ample oscillation to produce sound. Their sound waves interact with each other. My wonderful students, I wonder if this is still taking a second to go back and forth. See, it's only going a little bit. We're still going, though. Theoretically, no matter what the side-to-side -side amplitude is, it'll be going for a second. Okay, so anyways, oscillation in the pendulum. Resonance, oscillation. Beats, oscillation. Oscillating systems are fundamental uh, importance of fundamental importance to uh, 
I'm going to go to the document can. This is this is crazy. Uh, oscillating systems are, are of, of fundamental uh, uh, importance to an astronomer because quantum physics is based on the physics of waves. Waves are oscillating. All of matter behaves as waves. Whether you see them or not, they're all behaving like waves. We detect those waves or the interference, or we use, I should say, Charles, we use the interference of light waves interacting with matter uh, to determine the identity of elements, hydrogen, helium, lithium, all the other elements in a star or in any kind of astronomical object. Most of what we know in astronomy is because we observe light. What we've just done is look at two oscillating systems, uh, two sound systems, observation three and observation two, and then a, a physical hanging pendulum, a gravitational system, if you will, for observation number one. Oscillating systems to show you concepts of period, resonance, and interference that electromagnetic waves have. And that is important for us because ev almost you know, 99.99% of all that we know about the universe outside of the planet Earth is because of light. Now, um, I want to go over the syllabus with you. And, and Hunter, thank you. Good. Okay. Give Hunter a, a hand clap. And let's, uh, let me see if, oh, we haven't handed out the syllabuses yet. Let's, uh, Hunter, could you come back up? Emergency duty. Um, here we go. Okay. Could you hand out? Um, actually, I'll help you. Um, just give out big bunches. Don't count them out. Give out big bunches up the first wedge and then down this middle, this other wedge. And I'll do the same thing over here. Okay, we're just going to hand these out. Um, so you guys um, take them um, left and behind you. Left and behind you. Send some behind you. Send some behind you. Send a bunch behind you. Send a bunch behind you. Okay, now send a bunch, but take some and go right and, and behind you, okay? Now, you only have people behind you, so. Yeah. So just kind of split them up and disperse, dispersion of syllabi. Lindsay, I can't believe it. Nice. Nice to see you. We don't have SSG in this class, unfortunately. All right, just try to filter them back <coughs> side to side and, and up the hill. Some of them are green, some are yellow. <coughs> Who's still waiting for a syllabus over here? Raise your hand. Raise your hand high. Okay, hurry up. Who's got that big bottle? Come on. There you go. Send them back. Send them to the right. Okay, you guys over here all have syllabuses? Over here? You all got it back there? Okay. All right, syllabi back there. Uh, Hunter, can you collect the leftovers? Who doesn't have a syllabus? Hunter. These guys over here. Get some over here. You don't have one. You got caught napping. I thought we started them down here. And yeah, we'll get you one. Is there any leftovers over here? No? All right, we'll get you one. Hunter's, Hunter's got to get one, too. Okay. Good. Well, we'll talk about the syllabus for the rest of the hour and then dismiss. You have a homework assignment in web courses. 
it's pretty essential. You know, we're supposed to do an attendance homework uh, last few semesters by federal regulation. Uh, they're, they're from the government, and they're here to help. And so we're going to try to... <laughs> she, don't choke when I say that. She's, I said that, and she started choking. Um, so that's like three questions in web courses, multiple choice. Just do it tonight, and you'll, you'll be good. And... Uh, but you have till Friday if you're a slacker, or if you come in late for class. Okay, we need we need one up here. Who doesn't have a syllabus? Anybody? Bueller? Okay. Let's take a look at this. And I'll I guess I'll try to use the the podcast. Okay, here's the here's the specs. Uh, my first and last name, of course. Um, my physical office in the physical science building is room 156, but I can only meet with a couple students at a time there. So we use 158, um, and that's down the office hours slot. Um, where it says phone number uh, 823-6286, uh, I want you to find that on the, in that little table there and draw a line through it because I never check my messages. So. Don't ever try to call me at my office. It's not very efficient. But uh, web courses, yes. And what I want you to do in web courses is use the messaging system. I cannot use regular conventional email with you guys, uh, mainly because of privacy uh, reasons. In other words, I can't talk to you about your grades, your grades, on conventional email, but in web courses I can. So if you want to contact me, web courses messaging, uh, I believe it's called conversations, is the most efficient and it's secure. It's considered private. Okay. So if you don't have something that's private, you know, like you're asking me about a homework question and not about your grades, you know, you can just post it in discussions. That's normal too. Um, okay. Our office hours are Wednesday, 9 o'clock. Uh, textbook, Essential Cosmic Perspective, uh, websites, webcourses.ucf.edu, and then masteringastronomy.com. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Twitter. Uh, Twitter handle Brainwave777X. And I'll hashtag it with AST2002-3. I'll signify... Because there's a lot of ASTs out there, and uh, that you know you're going to be, you know, that's not going to be very efficient. Anyways, um, I've already posted some information on that in the last few days, and you can, I'll try to do that every day a little bit. Uh, okay, next paragraph. University of Central Florida is committed to providing reasonable accommodation for all persons with disabilities. Uh, Dr. Brickner shares the same commitment. That's me. Students with disabilities who need accommodations must be registered with Student Accessibility Services, SAS, over in Feral Commons. Uh, and the phone numbers are listed there. Students who are registered with SAS and need accommodations in Astronomy 2002 must contact me at the beginning of the semester to discuss needed accommodations. No accommodations will be provided until the student has met with the professor to request accommodations. And we will use the Knights Access System. Uh, and so if that is you, um, it's, it's very normal. We, everything works good. We use the Knights Access System, but you've got to get your paperwork rolling. So get your you-know-what over to the uh, uh, SAS office and get the paperwork going. And, and uh, by the time the first test rolls around, or if you need a note taker, uh, we'll, we'll, normally we get that squared away as well. So it's, uh, it's very reliable and it's easy to do. So uh, just do that and everything will be copacetic. Okay, the next table, homework. These are the different tasks that go into your grade uh, for the semester. Okay, exams, 200 points. Uh, regular homework in masteringastronomy.com, 25. iClicker 2 in class, 25. And then we'll have some graphing homework, maybe one or two, uh, to turn in on paper that I will grade and the grader will help me grade, or the TA will help me grade. Uh, and that will be worth 10 points. So a total of 260 points. And uh, so homework is a little bit less than 10%, and eye-clicking is a little bit less than 10%. And uh, so it's, 
It's uh, it's good. Examinations. Okay, let's go and look at the examinations. Okay, exam schedule now. Um, if you're used to making flashcards for your classes, it might help you a little bit in this class, but not a whole lot, basically because I'm going to be challenging you to, not so much to memorize facts about Mars or something, but to think about the, and I'll be giving you facts about Mars that I want you to think with and put together and make decisions and judgments about and stuff like that. So flashcards are not big for me, but if you do make a flashcard, make it this one, the exam schedule, because it is in stone. It is engraved in stone. There's no deviation from it. February 11th for exam one, 50-point exam, one-hour exam, roughly. Uh, exam two, March 17th, exam three on April 14th. All three of those midterms were 50 points. Now, um, the final exam, uh, make a note of it. It starts at 1, not 1.30. It's on May 3rd. Uh, and it's 100 points. It's double the size of a midterm. But it will be cumulative. Um, and it will be challenging simply, I mean, even if I ask the simplest questions about stuff in January, but t by the time we're in May, it's going to be rough to remember all that stuff, you know, put it all together. So it's going to be a challenging final, as is uh, normal. Uh, midterm exams will be during the class meeting, so just come here to class. You'll be you'll be able to take the exam. And if you take all three midterms, we'll drop the lowest of the three and keep the two best exam grades. Okay, let me repeat that. If you take all three midterms, we'll ditch the lowest score, keep the best two. All right now, the reason that we do that is to help you um, to accommodate the occasional student that is absent for an exam. All right. And uh, but it works out nicely. It's it's very nice to have three. Now, if you have an absence, whether it's excused or unexcused on exam day, um, there's no makeup. Even if it's an excused. So if you're in the hospital with an excused absence, doctor's note, all that stuff, um, it's still you, you still don't get a makeup. What you do is get a drop. That's your dropped exam. Now, if that happens to you on exam one, I want you to document your absence. If it's medical or a hurricane blows up suddenly or, you know, or military call, you know, you're in the reserves and you've got to go away for the weekend, and that includes Thursday, you know, that will be excused, but, that'll also, but that exam will be dropped. That will be your dropped exam. But if you have two then we have to have everything documented. If you have two excused absences, like you're in reserves one for the first one and you're in the hospital for the third one, if you document them, you know, doctor's note, call up papers, whatever, um, then we'll be able to make an adjustment to your grade. But it, the, almost everybody is going to miss zero or a few will miss one. And hardly anybody ever misses two. Right, so, um, so don't miss an exam. And, and it'll be good. And everything will go good. Exams uh, are multiple choice. So you need to bring uh, a UCF fill in the dots Scantron. Uh, we use the raspberry colored one, the one with the UCF Pegasus logo on it. So not the brown ones. If you're a business major, I think you guys use a different form. We use the raspberry flavored one. And uh, so, so don't mess it up. Um, okay, next paragraph. At UCF, uh, academics comes first. Attendance at exams is mandatory. There will be no makeup examinations. University excused absences exist only for religious observances, you know, so like Passover or something, Good Friday, intercollegiate activities and athletics, university verified family or medical emergency. So like a uh, uh, family emergency would be like if there's a, a, a hurricane that goes through Miami and your, par your parents live in Miami and, and you have to go down and help your parents, you know, dig out and whatnot. That's a family emergency. Um, 
However, the next sentence is, is not. Weddings, plane tickets that your mom got you on Priceline.com, etc., they do not count as legitimate excuses. So uh, plan your semester, and if you know that you can't make it to one of these exams, you better drop now. And take this class another semester. No, no skin off your nose. You know, it's good. But uh, let's read the next paragraph. Uh, physics department policy is that making missed up work will only be permitted for university sanctioned activities and bona fide medical or family reasons. Authentic justifying documentation must be provided in every case and in advance for university sanctioned activities. So if you're on a sports team and you're traveling for the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, which does happen, um, your coach or advisor or your club advisor will have something called a program verification form. I need to have that. And then you'll be excused and documented and everything. At the discretion of the instructor, let's finish the paragraph. The makeup may take any reasonable and appropriate form, including but not limited to the following. A replacement exam, replacing the missed work with the same score as a later exam, allowing a dropped exam, replacing the missed work with the homework or quiz average. Now I underlined that phrase, allowing a dropped exam. Go ahead and circle that on your syllabus. That is what we will do. This whole paragraph is standard for all classes in the physics department. In this physics class, we do the dropped exam. All right. Uh, and just as a word of warning, any cheating I detect on examinations will be punishable by no less than a zero on the exam in question and up to expulsion from UCF. Using another student's eye clicker in their absence is cheating, so don't do that either. Okay, it's five more minutes and then we'll dismiss. Clickers, second page. Okay, we're going to use the eye clicker too. You have to register it through web courses. There's a little button at the upper, or there will be at the upper left of our web courses homepage where you'll be able to click your, and what you do is you type in your serial number for your eye clicker. We're not dismissed yet, you guys. We go until 250, just so you know, okay? If you have to leave early, I understand sometimes you have a class at the other side of campus. Try to sit in the back so it doesn't disrupt everybody. Anyways, iClicker. So uh, you'll register your iClicker through web courses only. So don't go to iClicker.com. Other classes you could do that. This class, it has to be through web courses, simply because we have a zillion of you guys, a huge roster, and if you do it through iClicker.com, it has a history of getting really screwed up. All right. So, But through web courses, as soon as we get it activated, it does, it's really simple and it's very reliable. Question? If we have an iClicker for another class, you can use the same iClicker as another, that you have for another class. Yes, you can do that. And, but you still, even if you register for the other class at iClicker.com, I still want you to register through web courses. They won't conflict. But I'll get my roster of students with their iClickers from web courses, not from iClicker.com. So, and here's another note. If you haven't got your iClicker yet, they're kind of expensive. If you have a roommate or a friend that's not using their iClicker 2 on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30 to 3, you can use theirs for, for this class. Just don't lose it. I mean, if they need it uh, for their classes on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, they've got to have it. But, but, yeah, you can register theirs and use it here, no problem. Okay, so that's a way to save a little bit of dinero. All right, there's a little note there. Turn off pop-up blocking before registering. And no class code is needed when you go through web courses. Um, let's see. Twitter, they got a help line there. Um, okay, last thing. Deadline for iClicker 2 registration is January 26th. And that's when the official iClicker pointage will start for your semester grade, the 20, where, where you get the 25 out of 25 or, or, or fewer. Prior to that, we'll have practice questions in class. So Thursday, we'll have a few iClicker questions in class. You'll be able to click even before you register. 
But if you register, I will know that it's you clicking. If you click before you register, it'll go through, but I won't know whose who's clicker that is until you register. So register, and if you participate with a registered clicker on Thursday, that's one bonus point. Next Tuesday, another bonus point. Next Thursday, another bonus point. So you could get three bonus points for early iClicker registration. And then two Tuesdays from now, official start. Okay, we'll finish. Uh, we'll dismiss now, and we'll cover the rest of the syllabus on Thursday. You're dismissed.